A few years ago, I was part of this great team of 60 students that did a project together named Prispa. Basically, we constructed, we designed and constructed that house that runs only with solar energy and participated to a competition in Madrid named Solar Decathlon Europe. It was a great experience, it took two years, and when, it, when we came back, I met with uh, Mona and Michaela from a company that supported our project to tell them about this experience, how it was in Madrid and everything. And uh, I told them how much I'd like to continue to investigate sustainability and to do this kind of great projects, but maybe in a more social way. They told me we might have something for you. They just visited the community, a Roma community in Boldesca uh, to give them some, to give the children some clothes and things for school because the school year was starting. And they said they fell in love with the children. They, they want to create something that will help them on a long term, an educational program and they might need a building for all the activities that they want to do there. What a great commission. I was just starting my practice, just finishing internship and school, and I thought, yeah, I'm very lucky to do this project. So we went to Boldesca N. This is how Boldesca N looks like. I went there a few days ago with a photographer, a friend of mine named Sorino Nishor, to take some pictures so, I, so that you can understand better the concept. This is one of the streets in Boldescaen, in the Roma community of Boldescaen. This is their houses, the children there. Other houses made of wood structure and clay. People from Boldescaen, the other part of the street. And the little girl struggling in the street with mud to get home, and she finally arrived there. Boldeskayen is a town 50 kilometers north from Ploest. It has a population of 11,000 people and an unemployment rate of 8.1%, which is not very bad considering the national unemployment rate, which is between 5 and 6%. But there is uh, this, uh, you can see it there. This is where the, most of the Roma community is gathered. There are Roma people all over the city, but most of them are gathered there. There are 1,000 Roma people in Boldesca N, and only 30 of them have a working contract. That means only 30 of them have health insurance, pay taxes to the state, etc., etc. The rest of them work on a daily basis if they can find work or live out of well care or child care. And the family in the Roma community has an average of four, between 4 and 5 percent, but there are families with even 12 percent, 12, uh, sorry, 12 uh, children. In this condition, is, uh, most of them drop out of school. The good thing about it is that uh, there is this, the priest from the community, Mr. Oprishan, that started an educational program, an after-school program, actually, and he helps the children to prepare for the school. So what we decided to do is build on that and uh, develop his after-school project so that we can add more activities, even in the era of vocational experiences, and extend the program so that it becomes available to all the children from the poor families, the entire Roma community, but not only, only from the poor families, from the Romanian families. So we thought that we cannot just uh, give something like a present. We have to involve uh, many parts so that they can feel they worked for this result and they that deserve it and that is theirs. So we went to the town hall and talked to the mayor, told him what we want to do, and we asked for a site. We received the site there in the Roma community, and I was very happy about it because seeing the houses and being uh, built out of clay, I immediately thought of uh, earth construction, doing experimenting some techniques like uh, rammed earth or clay bricks. But then we invited the second partner, which is the Amare Romenza NGO. They do educational programs all over Romania with children and uh, even their parents from Roma communities. And they told us that uh, this site there in the Roma community is not a good thing because they are already marginalized. And if we make them very comfortable in their area, they will not uh, interact with the others and they will not integrate, we don't help them integrate in the society. 
So it's better to encourage them and to try to do the social center that we were planning in the city so that they interact more with the Roma children. After that, we, so we went back to the city hall and asked for another site, and we received one. We have a plot that has the school and the medical center, and in the courtyard we are building the social center. So it's very good because they interact with everybody. And in this program, we enrolled uh, two-thirds of the children are from the Roma communities, and one-third is from the Romanian community. We also invited Habitat for Humanity. I'm sure you know about them. Because they, I, I worked with them before and they had, I knew that they are interested in uh, more sustainable solutions for the families they are trying to help. And they also have this expertise in construction field. And they also are very flexible and they can work with volunteers. Because we had a special request, we asked them to hire at least three people from the Roma community so that we can create a source of income for this uh, limited period while the construction phase lasted. This is the house, how it looks uh, this week. And we decided to use a combination of traditional te construction techniques and materials with some more innovative one. So we have this uh, wood construction, wood structure with straw bales. Um, why traditional, uh, traditional techniques? Because they are sometimes very accessible to the people there. For example, straw bales, they are uh, considered waste, agricultural waste and they cost 10 times less than uh, the common solution, which is mineral wool, and they have the same thermal performance. But a lot of people are very skeptical about these solutions because uh, straw bells can rot, they can uh, burn, and they attract rats. And all of this is true if they are not executed correctly. So I'm going to tell you a problem that we had two months ago. We had uh, this team of volunteers from Habitat for Humanity Network, and the team of volunteers from this company that is financing the project. And we did uh, an event, a volunteering event there on site, and we wanted to do something interesting, and we did the walls. We put the straw bells in the walls, because we thought that the roof will, take, will go very fast and we'll be able to cover it. The weather was very good, so we did that. But actually, the roof took more, a lot more than we expected, and the rainy season came. And although we covered the walls, the straw bells attracted humidity from the air, and uh, uh, the straw bells started to rot. Then we had to decide that we have to change all the straw bells from the walls. And uh, although it was a bad experience, it's a good lesson for the people working there. They will know very well what they have to do when they do this kind of construction. So going back to the people from the community that we hired, we actually train them in these techniques that are gaining more and more interest from the general public. Other traditional techniques are these, uh, for example, these shingles that we use for the roof covering that I've, I like them a lot because they have this very beautiful texture. We also have clay plastering on the interior, which is a very good thermal mass and the humidity regulator. And we have also sheep wool as an insulation for, to supplement the insulation from the roof. We have some uh, special techniques, like we did this foundation on metal screws. Metal screws are used usually for highways or for billboards. This was the first civil construction in Romania that had a foundation on metal screws. So the impact, and a second one uh, came just after one week in Timisoara. The impact on the land is this way minimized because we don't have the concrete foundations. And if one day we uh, deconstruct the house, it's 100% reversible, and metal is 100% recyclable. We were asked by the city hall how much, to estimate how much the cost will be for operating, for gas, energy, and water. And we thought about it and answered nothing, zero. We decided to be zero water, zero energy, to not use gas. For example, in this picture, you can see the, the water cycle that is closed. We are not connected to the public mains. We take potable water from the well that is drilled 60 meters. To be 100% that the water is potable and safe for the children, we have a UV ray treatment, so without chemicals. We collect the rainwater, we store it to, to the water tanks that we, there were before, and we clean them and reuse them. And the black water that comes from the toilet is going into an aerobic treatment plant that is transforming it into compost for the gardening. And also with the rainwater, we use it to irrigate the garden. 
We have a solar system that has 30 photovoltaic panels placed on the roof of the school that is nearby. And we have two solar thermal, power, thermal panels that produce hot water. So this should cover the entire energy and hot water we need on an annual basis. We calculate the CO2 footprint for the entire life cycle of the building. That means construction phase, 50 years of operating and deconstruction, and we want to compensate everything by planting trees. But in order to minimize the CO2 footprint, we don't have combustion, so we do not burn anything in the building to produce heat or uh, I don't know what we need for the kitchen. We have an uh, air-to-air -air heat pump, we have a heat recovery system, the photovoltaic system, so we are not connected to the gas also. We plan to um, we plan to, uh, to buy another piece of land and start an agricultural, uh, to start practicing agriculture there and uh, also do this as part of the educational program that we are uh, organizing for the children. So each children will, uh, will seed the plants, will grow them and they will collect food. We are only interested in, uh, food, in plants that produce food, not in flowers or anything decorative. We are now trying to close the building by Christmas and start working on the interior design where we want to involve the children more because outside maybe it's the health and safety requirements and it's not okay, but in the interior there are smaller things that we can do, organizing some workshops. For example, on Saturday we are going to Virgil Skripkari, which is an artist in Pisco near Bucharest, where we plan to do all the dishes for the social center. So we'll do 70 sets of dishes we, uh, by doing this pottery workshop first, and then we'll do another workshop in the, in the building before Christmas to paint, the, to paint the dishes. Those photos were taken this summer when I organized the workshop with my students from the Faculty of Architecture from Cluj, and we also went to Virgil and did this workshop to do some pottery. So what I'd like you to take from this presentation is the idea that we can see these communities not as, not as problems for our society, but maybe an endless field of opportunities for us to do great things and to develop with them. Thank you very much.